Hey guys, so we literally just saw a new live stream from the devs going over Stronghold missions, which for those that don't know, are basically instances or dungeons within Anthem. Whilst the gameplay was going on, there wasn't a lot of amazing stuff said. We can go over the builds of what the devs were running and specific abilities seen from the Interceptor's perspective, which I do want to highlight first. But then at the end, some really big questions were answered, talking about what raids are, talking about how loot works and some really important stuff there. But I do want to address some concerns that people have had about loot and progression but that is going to be another big talking point for another day too we'll go over that very shortly but my name is ryan central and we just hit 5,000 subscribers so thank you very much if you subscribed within the last week or so this does mean that we will be doing some giveaways but here about those sort of january time we won't do it over christmas but expect some pretty big stuff there again love you all thank you very much for subscribing and if you want more Anthem related content and also some never before seen gameplay which should be going on the channel fairly soon, do subscribe for more Anthem content. With that said, let's go over the builds that the developers were running on their javelins. So the team are running a stronghold which is called Temple of the Scar, or Temple of Scar if you're looking in the top right. This as I said is basically an instance, there's elements of fighting bosses. One area I did want to specifically highlight because it looks amazing, as I said we'll go over that in a second, but let's have a look at what the devs are running. So it's Mike Gamble that's running the Interceptor on screen, so I thought now was a good time to talk about the abilities that Mike is running. First of which is the Plasma Star, which seems like a default shuriken ability, doesn't have any homing in effect, it doesn't seem to have any any elemental quantities it's just a case of you throw it where you look but it seems to have a pretty good drop off range and also if you noticed in the bottom right you have four shurikens it could throw out at once but once you throw out all four you need to wait until all four have recharged again but this is also the same if say you use three shurikens you have to wait until it's completely full up to get those three shurikens given back to you mike is also running the acid bomb which is a grenade that does damage over time effect to the scars fairly straightforward and we also have an ability that I don't even think we saw Mike Gamble use at any point, which was his support slot. There are only two options, one of which is called the target beacon, which marks a target for increased damage, which will then switch to another target if the marked enemy is destroyed, or rally cry, which removes status effects from all nearby allies. But considering the icon is a target, I'm leaning towards this being the target beacon. But again, I don't think we saw Mike Gamble use it, or at least me looking through this gameplay a second time, I haven't spotted it. So if he does use it, do let me know where it is on the stream. The weapons, he's also running a shotgun which makes sense considering the interceptor is kind of like a very fast rogue very nimble very quick so getting in close to the enemies and just shotgunning them in the face kind of like a scout in tf2 makes a lot of sense but also he is running a pistol which can also pack a punch i'm not quite sure if it's a hand cannon of sorts but still seems to do a good amount of damage but but this is a very generic interceptor by the looks of it at least having varied abilities both running from long range like the shuriken plasma stars but also close range with a shotgun and also the melee and ultimate the melee LA seems to string together as you're seeing on screen. You just keep pressing the button and it keeps going and going and going. But it also apparently stun locks targets according to what Ben Irving was saying. So every time that we saw Mike Gamble using this ability, it looked really, really strong. And then we go on to the ultimate, which is kind of like this, but you are completely invulnerable whilst you're using it. So you just run into the enemy team, just hold left click and kill everybody. It's like playing Brigitte in Overwatch. But the main thing I wanted to highlight from this gameplay is that the Interceptor looks crazy good. Maybe a little bit even broken, but bear in mind that this game is still in alpha, or still in development at least. So there's a lot of fine tuning to be had with this Javelin in particular. But certainly looking from this gameplay, the Interceptor looks really, really good. Now I do want to highlight some of the time, the Colossus and the Storm and what they were running. But really, I just want to sort of save some time and go over some of the amazing questions and answers that the developers went over towards the end of the stream whilst I play some gameplay of the stronghold but also do pay attention to this area of the map and the stronghold because it looks amazing and also really makes use of the verticality that you can get out of Anthem and because of that I think there's a lot of big success. Whilst I did say that the Interceptor looks really, really strong, this is played on a normal difficulty. And speaking of difficulties, let's go over that question now, as Mike Gamble definitely explains better than I can how difficulties work within the game. For those of you who haven't followed the game very closely, we have six difficulties in total. Three of them are, are, are open during the crit path, yep. easy, normal, and hard. Mm -hmm. And then we have three more difficulties, which are top tier, unlocked at what, level 30? Level, level 30. 30 yeah. um, called Grandmaster 1, 2, and 3. And that is also scalable on our side, so we can continue yeah. to do things we'll like add that more later on. Time. Yeah, indeed. 
The reason why I wanted to highlight this question first is it goes nicely into strongholds and how loot works. Generally the question that was asked is, can you get specific loot from running strongholds? And again, I'll let the developers talk whilst the gameplay is going on in the background, but then I do want to add something else onto the bottom of this. Uh, are there any loot drops that only come out of strongholds? No. So the way the loot system works is uh, it's loot tables and then the harder the content you do, mm -hmm. uh, the higher chance you have of getting better loot. The better so loot table. if yep. you do like a stronghold on a really hard difficulty, you'll be getting really rare, epic, you know, even Master masterwork work. and legendary gear. Yep. Um, as opposed to if you were doing free play on easy, you're yep. more likely to get the, the kind of lower rarity gear. Yep. You want um, that masterwork as you showed in the last stream, because yep. it has a masterwork property on That's it. That's right. Which Absolutely. is awesome. Um, so, uh, no. Uh, so <laughs> cool. players want to run strongholds more than once. Will there be something that keeps them coming back? I think that was kind of answered with the loot question. Yeah, like loot you, and uh, difficulty. That's yep. it's, a, it's the best way to cho uh, chase. Masterwork and legendary uh, gear and weapons yep. is by running strongholds, cranking up the difficulty until you're running it at, at Grandmaster 3. Yep. Yep. It's a bit of a complicated conversation to have, but think of it this way. Say you have this awesome sniper rifle that you can only get from the stronghold that we just saw. That's the only place that you can get it from. So wouldn't you just go onto the easiest difficulty and just spam that stronghold over and over to get that rifle? That's exactly why there's no specific loot in strongholds, because it doesn't really work with a difficulty system within the game, right? So, so there are pools of gear that if you play harder difficulty, you're more likely to get better gear. So if you do a really difficult stronghold on easy, you might get the same gear and abilities and items than you would if you did Grandmaster difficulty just doing random missions out and about in the world. It's a really difficult thing to balance for Bioware so I hope they do a really good job of it but hopefully that explains my point a little bit more. But I know that there's a lot of concern coming out of the community when it comes to how loot is going to work but it requires a much longer and better structured conversation from myself so I do expect that video in a couple of days. But don't panic there are some really good reasons from Bioware on why this is the case. Let's end on a much better note. There is one thing above Strongholds in terms of difficulty, and it's very vague. The term raid has been thrown around. Mark Darrett in the past has said that there is raids within Anthem, but some of the community members have said, we don't have raids, but the reason is, is they have something like raids, but they're describing it as something different. It's confusing. I'll just let Ben Irving explain exactly what he means. Will there be raids? Yeah, so we can, we can answer this question kind of. So I think we believe that uh, every game needs aspirational content. Yep. So the idea that there's a lot of activities that you do in the game uh, and it feels meaningful to have this long tail chase towards something. Either something that is challenging or something that is rewarding or that gives you better stuff. Um, and so at launch, we have a lot of amazing aspirational stuff to do, right? As you go through the crit path, um, and get towards max level, you know, you start, you know, getting more, a better idea of what javelin you want to play, what role you want to play. Yeah, yeah. And then you start kind of chasing this loot and getting really powerful. Um, and then as you enter like the Elder game, you have uh, strongholds that you just mm -hmm. saw today and legendary contracts. Yep. And as you're doing these harder difficulties, you're building these loadouts and creating these synergies and play styles and trying to work out how to take on the hardest challenges and then, you know, how to do that by yourself for a build, but then, amongst a group of four players to keep pushing. Uh, and then as we enter the live service, we plan to add more and more stuff. And yeah, so we, cool stuff we have awesome. some really exciting aspirational stuff for the mm -hmm. live service that we're not talking about yet that'll come you know, pretty soon after launch that will be, as players have done all this amazing content we have at launch, there'll yeah. be some more stuff that I think yeah. everything you do will get you ready for the things that come later. Yeah. Um, and we'll be talking about that next year. And, and it's we, cool and it's different and we don't call them raids, but right. uh, yeah. But like it feels said, that aspirational content. content. And we yeah. want to talk about it. It's just we, we just do. Can't. Just can't. We just can't do it yet. And, and right. best of all, it's, it's tied into the very fabric of, of the game and the chaotic yep. world. And so we're really excited about it. You can only really describe that as vague. And so I can understand you guys maybe a bit frustrated with that answer, especially that I put in the title, new information on raids. But I do want to include a screenshot that was taken from a video some time ago talking about why this is raids and some other bits of details that you should really bear in mind. This is a screenshot of the answer from Matt Dara way back when. Will Anthem's versions of raids have matchmaking? Matt Dara says yes. It's not really confirmation as such. But then this conversation came from Discord over like two months ago. The Diesel is a developer for Bioware leading stuff surrounding strongholds and raids I believe. But the Diesel does say strongholds are our versions of dungeons. He then goes on to say that raids are a topic for another day. I'm also leading those two. Winky face. 
He says that there's puzzle type mechanics and he's super excited to share what we have planned for raids but that's on a no talking list at the moment. So maybe this high end content might not even be in for launch but maybe a couple of months afterwards which makes sense whilst people get up the gear that they need and there's various different ways to go over it. But again, I do want to cover Lou and the concerns or the problems that people have with the system, probably at the weekend, to be honest, at this rate. But there's some of the big talking points that came out of the developers that I really wanted to highlight. But some big information on raids, like John Warner said, they're not calling them raids, and they are a little bit different, but they seem to have really high-end content planned for Anthem, which is exciting. Some big news on how loot progression works, especially with the difficulties, and again, some amazing Interceptor and Stronghold gameplay in the background. If if you did enjoy this video do like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys very soon take care thanks again for 5,000 subscribers love you guys take care see you soon